The Shostakovich Cello Concerto um, was written in 1959 for Rostropovich, and it was a concerto inspired by Prokofiev's Symphony Concerto, the big piece on my last Prokofiev album. So in a way, it was a very natural musical journey to make, to come to Shostakovich's music on record. And what always amazes me every time I approach Shostakovich is that on from surface it may seem extremely rhythmic and energetic. It's got that Shostakovich's um, signature drive, you know, that relentless, you don't stop, you just go, 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 and bam, it's over. But beneath that surface is really, I find, tremendous tragedy, just sadness that just weighs down on your soul. It is so heavy. <laughs> Well, I had a great time working with Maestro Papano on the Prokofiev recording. Um, the sort of intensity and passion that he brought. It's not merely accompaniment, but you're actively involved in creating music together. And that, for me, is really the essential of music making. Uh, being a soloist, you can only do so much on your own. You need equal input from the orchestra. And in order to get that from the orchestra, you need the conductor to believe in this music and to really have some sort of vision that can sort of fuse together with yours and make some sort of masterpiece. I found it rather strange to be compared to Jacqueline Dupre. What is most vivid for me is uh, my memory of watching her playing the Elgar Concerto for the first time when I was eight years old. It was just simply striking. The intensity with, with which she was bent upon saying something through you know, Elgar just struck me as wonderful, you know. And I think that's when I really, for the first time, realized that a musician is also a communicator. You, you are communicating something. The sonata was written much earlier, when he was in his 20s, um, right after he wrote the Lady of Macbeth um, opera. It's almost concurrent with his fourth symphony. The relationship between the piano and the cello is really like two friends having a conversation, very intimate. The piece is almost transparent, structurally. And musically, of course, it's got this phenomenal scherzo movement just completely beautiful and still slow movement framed by you know rather somber but beautiful first movement and totally sarcastic ironical last movement only that sort of irony um, Shostakovich can give us <laughs> Thank you.
I think it's very important for, for any musician, in my opinion, to always find ways to evolve, you know, always mature and grow because really when we say, you know, perfection is impossible in music, that's in a way very true because it's really infinite. The possibilities are infinite. There's, you can always do something better, especially in arts like music. You know, there's no two times two is four, but not in music. You see, it, the, it's really... So never to be overwhelmed by your current success or, you know, career or your age even, but just to keep on growing is, um, for me, my first priority. Well, my future plans include concerts, as usual, concerts, recitals, but also I think our next recording project will be with Tony Papano and his new orchestra in Rome, the Santa Cecilia Orchestra. We will be recording the Lalo Cello Concerto, which is an extremely well-written and romantic piece at heart, but also I feel it's been a bit neg neglected, you know, people haven't been performing it that much, so I hope to revive it. <laughs> um, and also we'll be recording on the same disc, shorter works for cello and orchestra, which are equally so beautiful but rarely performed because of the length of the pieces. It's awkward to program them, they're about, you know, eight to ten minutes long, Tchaikovsky, Andante Cantabile, Dvorak, Rondo, Paganini, and that sort of thing. So it's going to be a wonderful infusion of romantic spirit and uh, I'm really looking forward to it.